Hey, how you doing? I'm Ivan Blackstock for Artists for Artists. In other news, I managed to grab this guy. He's always flying around the world um, and he's a big inspiration for all of us. I would like to introduce you to DJ Renegade. And which voice would you like? Because I can do the Darth oh, Vader gosh. voice. Here we go. I can do the Patrick Stewart Shakespearean voice. Patrick Stewart. What, what sort of <laughs> voice is that? Patrick Stewart Shakespearean voice. It's more like, like Shakespeare. That's the voice. So where's the Patrick Stewart thing coming into it? I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's actually a ghost. That's it's what it yeah, is. Doesn't exist. <laughs> You have been kind of, shall I say, helping the scene for a while, you know, um, developing some amazing uh, poppers in the scene, amazing b-boys. Um, why did you feel that you needed to give back? Because some people don't give back, you know, they just, <laughs> I've done what I did and it's all cool or it's too much hassle. Is this the honest story you want? Huh? You want the honest story, right? The honest, give me the, the, the truth. Um, <laughs> around the 2000s, I come back from living in Hong Kong, right? And I've got a brother, one, one that's just younger than me, eight years younger, and he was breaking. He was in Children of the Monkey Basket. Yeah. Right? And I come back and he, all of a sudden he's good. He's been watching my videos. I mean, I used to teach him when he was younger or whatever. But he's watching my videos and he's one of the best in the UK. And I'm just like, what's going on, man? So I go to a few things and I think they're all shit. Yeah. I think they're all crap, right? So I'm just like, whatever. Because um, there was this massive disconnect. It's partly our fault, the elders, but it's also the kids' fault as well. Because not every elder is a dickhead. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You have to find the ones that are willing to help you, yeah. right? So as a result, I think they were lo lacking in an understanding of the culture of hip hop, mm. right? And as a result, I didn't think that people were, had a high level here, yeah. right? So I was living in Denmark, like I said, working in the Tivoli Gardens, blah, 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 blah. And Storm comes and visits him and a guy named Raphael from a crew named Five Amox. And we're talking and I'm lamenting about how shit the scene is in the UK. Right, and they're just like, "What are you doing?" Man? He, no, he just basically said, "Shut the fuck up and do something about it." Nah. Right, yeah. and then I was just like, "Yeah." Right, so I come back. Sue's teaching, Sunanda, yeah. and I, I connect with her and I start helping out at her, at her class. And then, by 2004, I form a group with her, Flozaic, mm. right, just to push the scene a little bit here. So I'm, I'm training her. Uh, Angel was here, uh, Firefly, and I'm just trying to get them organised and to, to be a bit more serious about breaking and stuff, right? And then 2005, I, f I formed Mavericks, yeah. right? And the reason for that was because at the time, Hooch said he's not going to do a UK crew at Champs because the level's so low. And I was just like, you can't not have a UK crew at Champs, right? And he's like, what are you going to do about it, really? Yeah, crew-wise, I definitely agree on that. Yeah. You know, because I remember when I kind of tried to get into it when I was about 15, 16, I used to go to Derby a lot, yeah, you know, yeah, train yeah. with Trinity. And um, I remember individually, there was, it was just being observant of the scene and going to battles. I was like, crew-wise, I don't see anything, but individually, there's some monsters. You know? Yeah, we had some people, but the organisation wasn't there. And on top of that, nobody travelled, man. Yeah. So, as someone who was everywhere, I didn't see anybody, yeah. do you know what I mean? And I'm just like, what's happening? Or if I did see people, they would be holding up the wall. And I'm just like, you can't have this one. Not from UK. Yeah. We had we had some some good people in the 80s, you know? So I was just like, let me just do this project. Got some guys together, started training them, and then stuff started to happen. Yeah. Oh, and, um... and with the poppers, it was almost similar, but slightly different. It's just like, I was just minding my own business, bro. I'm honest, right? I was just getting on with Mavericks and whatever. Then I heard people talking shit about me, that I don't know anything about popping and all this. How that came about, I've no idea. Um, so I'm just like, what? You can't tell me. So yeah. I started teaching. Yeah. 
That was it. But the proof is in the pudding though, right? Every time. Yeah. I just don't like this kind of, this limit that people put on, on other people yeah. and as a result on themselves about what you can and can't do. I'm just like, no, I can do that. Yeah. But I've been a dick like that since I was a kid. My sister tells me like, we'd be watching a James Bond movie and they'd be skiing. Yeah. And I'd be saying, I can do that. And she'd be like, no, you can't get me. And I'd be like, yeah, I bet you I could. So I'm just that kind yeah. of character, like, show me it, I'll figure it out. Yeah. I can do that, why not? What's gonna tell me that I can't, mm. you know? And I'm not good at everything, right? Nobody is, but I've, I'll give it a good go, man. Yeah. Right? And I will try and figure it out. And, and if I can't, I'll move on to something I can do, do you know? The broken lineage between the older generation and the younger generation and do you think that has changed because we had a, a weird kind of toilet conversation <laughs> it wasn't obviously next to the same cubicle but it was out leaving you know and it, we i just said i just felt for me especially because it was like talking about you know the younger generation doesn't know and, and he speaks to elders i was like where were you you know where were you I, there's nowhere to go for me, you know, and I was trying to speak to certain people that like, you're just a kid, you're, you're trying to get on our level or trying to, I'll give you a few more years. I know. I, 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 I can't comment on that so much because I've never been like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When I found out about the whole jump off kind of uh, scene, mm. I went down there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I connected with Marlon and these kind yeah. of people, actually. So I was... Uh, advising Marlon from quite early and I was helping to to show breaker stuff and that um, from quite early so I, I I didn't feel that disconnect as much as it felt like you kids just wanted to do your own thing yeah forget them old guys now maybe you guys had had bad experience before yeah with some older guys yeah. or whatever but I think I was it was more on the foundations of stuff because I think for I'll say street dancers that do more choreography routine stuff mm all of that foundation stuff all came quite late for us, yeah. you know, and that understanding. And I remember just a lot of those sort of dances was getting blasted by the, the older generations. Like, that's, where's your foundation? Was that, whoa, yeah, but we I didn't, there was no, yeah. But I, I, I will say it was just interesting. Well, that was just the reason why I wanted to bring up because we didn't really finish off that conversation, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and. Um, for me, I've always been here and I've always been available. So yeah. people who wanted to find me, they find me, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? And I've had loads of people saying, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna come train. Yeah. And I'm still waiting, like five years ago. But so also, do you me. think it's the thing of making yourself visible as well? But I'm the most visible person here, yeah. right? And everybody knows that I teach and everybody knows I'm available, mm -hmm. like everybody. So it's on them to, to make that, that, that leap and say, yo, uh, can you help us out? Because the people that do do it, they train here. Yeah. You know, I mean, even like uh, Brooke and Sean and all these guys, they were on on that side of the divide before, yeah. right? Because there was a divide. Yeah. And they were on that side and they train here. Yeah. So if you're willing to to make the connection, it will happen, do you know what I mean? So it's up to, it's up to you guys, man. You know, I'm going to clown you because that's yeah. what I do, but... But don't you think it's... Uh... A 50 50 thing as well. I'm available. Yeah. Like, well, I'm, I'm, very busy I'm talking more on a, uh, a general of the, the older generation. It's also their responsibility I can't speak for them. too. The, the, thing, the thing with uh, the older generation is that most of them are disconnected from yeah. the scene. So, how much they can help you, I don't know. Yeah. Right? I've been on the scene constantly and yeah. I'm. I'm on all of the scenes, right? So I know exactly what's happening. Like I can name you the five top poppers, the five top yeah. b-boys, the five top of any style, mm. because I'm in the scene like that. Yeah. But most of those guys you're talking about, they stopped in 86, man. So how they can help you, I don't know. Mm. That's for you guys to find out or decide or whatever else. I can't help you. So do you think now that the younger generation have a lot more kind of mentorship for them to help them push forward? Yeah, 100%. Mm. Because now we have a middle generation, yourself yeah. and Brooke and all these kids. They're, 
mature enough in, in, in their knowledge of the culture to help the youngers. Yeah. So you can actually not worry about my generation, mm. right? Like, just forget about us, do you know what I'm saying? Like, but also, there's a question I want to throw to you is, how do we understand our UK hip hop history if, in a sense, there's only limited kind of points to go to, to access it? Because I think that's one thing I think that will help. How necessary us. is it? I have this, I have this, this debate with myself all the time. Do you know, like, I think I'm, I'm, the, I'm exactly the same. Because again, I'm a whole a thing with the whole foundations thing. I'm a bit like, if people see my work, I'm a, I kind of use it, then I kind of do that. And I was like, whatever, I'll just do me. Um, but also with, in just being a human, for instance, mm -hmm. and understanding myself. I learned a lot about myself because I learned about my history, you know, and where I came but the, from. But hip hop is not from here. Yeah. Okay. So, the uh, the important parts are today, and the beginning. Mm. Anything in between is not that important. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's it's uh, it's helpful, mm. but it's not important. I don't think. Yeah. Right. The journey it's taken, you find out later as you mature in a style or in a culture. But really, I did. Chinese Kung Fu. Where's it from? China. I don't need to know how it got to, to where I am. I just need to know it's from there and today. With uh, Jiu Jitsu, you know that it's from Japan and you do it today, Yeah. right? Yeah, there's been some innovations and stuff. And if you're interested in it really deep, you can go to Brazil and follow the thread, right? That's up to you. But do you need to know how it got from from Brazil to here or from Japan to here, not really. It's not gonna help your skill set. Yeah. Right? So you just need to know the origins, the context, and where you are today. So do you think then what we should be doing is documenting? Because same as for martial arts, um, yeah, we don't know how it all got here, but it's been documented very well. Why are you documenting? Mm. Well, the People were active for three years, bro. Yeah. Three years, man. Like, terror's been breaking longer than that. Terror's traveled more than anyone in my generation. Yeah. Trust me. Mm. Like, it's, it's, it's nice to hear the stories and yeah. to, you know, to, to see the glint in their eye when they remember being a child. Yeah. Do you know? Like, I had some great, great times as a kid, do you know what I mean? Like, the first time I even went to Covent Garden, it was amazing. And yeah. the first time I met uh, other dancers, it was amazing. And the first time I got on the floor in Covent Garden, it was amazing. And the first time I went to Spats, it was amazing. And when uh, there was uh, this, this battle in Lyceum, it was amazing. And, uh, you know, it's just like... And that's how it will be, I'm sure, for us. We'll be like, you remember Chocadero? Yeah, you remember South Bank? You remember Throwdown? Is and... some kid 15 yeah. years from now going to need to know about? Yeah. Not really, mm. you know. It's it's nice for the the dialogue with an elder and all this kind of stuff. But is it necessary for your growth? Not really, you know. So what are you documenting? You're documenting three years, and then a massive gap where it just gets messy. Yeah. Right. It's the same in the U.S. I see these old guys. They come out of the woodwork about how they used to do this, that, and a third, and all this, yeah. and it's just like. Who cares, man? I take a breath on that, because I do feel that, from what I've seen anyway, is UK has been very heavily influenced by... It's a UK art form. I mean, it's a US art form, yeah. right? I get that, mm. right? And it starts there and all that kind of stuff. But I, I only care about the guys that were active, yeah. right? Like, after it, the fad was gone, were you still doing it? Yeah. Then I'm interested in your story. If you were just there when the fad was on, I don't really care that much, yeah. do you know? Like, I'll shake your hand and be like, yo, that's dope, you took part, blah, yeah. blah, blah. But it was something that all kids do, yeah. do you know? What was your contribution yeah. beyond that? How can you help kids today, mm. right? What's your legacy? If your legacy is, oh, I used to be boy back in 1984 for two years, like, really? Yeah. Do you know, yeah, I got on television, like, Okay, Terra's been on television. Yeah. What, what, what else did you do? 
What did you create? Which schools have you created? Who have you mm. taught? Like, what are they doing? Yeah. This is what's important. Your legacy, it's all about legacy, man. It's all about your deeds. It's all about what's next. Yeah. Yesterday already happened, man. So we're in a new time with like uh, social media and branding and stuff like that. Um, do you think that us dancers, we should be really looking at how we brand ourselves and the Completely. business? Completely. I talk about this stuff all the yeah. time on Facebook, you know. Like I did a, a post the other day to the new dancers, the new superstars. But I don't know who's listening. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you are a brand, you are a product. Yeah. If you want to stay doing this and make a living from it, like you have to think of, of yourself like that. You have to know how to deal with contracts. You know how to. You have to know how to get paid. You have yeah. to know how to market your movement. You know, you have to know how to work with other people and to to get favors and and all this kind of stuff because it's just the way the world is now. Or is yeah. it going to get left behind? Yeah. And. Um with that business, um, there have been certain dancers, especially more internationally, that's been really on it, or they've been lucky enough to do a certain competition and able to be looked after, such as when you win BC1, yeah, you get yeah. to be, you know, looked after and stuff like that. Um, do you see, actually, going back to b-boying, do you see that is where it's going into a sense of being sponsored like an athlete, like a footballer? I saw that 10 years ago. Yeah. The, the second Red Bull turned up on the scene, mm. I was like, this is the future. Yeah. And before long, you have uh, sponsored athletes from other companies doing this, if they're not too slow, right? Our problem is our unprofessionalism has slowed that process, yeah. right? But it's the future. Yeah. Of course it is, man. Like, and it'd be what great the world to is built do, on, you know, <laughs> like instead of working a nine to five job or working in, I don't know, size or JD Sports, imagine being, you know. That's, that doesn't make no sense yeah. when your passion is movement, right? Like, let the movement pay you. Mm. Let it, let it, uh, yeah, let it make you live, yeah. you know? And there is a danger because there's a, there's a tipping point as well. If it becomes too much like work, you stop enjoying it. Yeah. So there are people who just want to do this as a release, yeah. right? But for them, this is not that serious. Yeah. But for some people who want to train five, six hours a day, they look at it as a sport. You, you need to get yeah. serious, do you know what I mean? Like, mm. that you've crossed the, the threshold from hobby to job. Yeah. And you need to be serious about it. Mm. You know, you have to start thinking about learning choreography, learning other styles of dance, um, fixing your <laughs> reading comprehension, right? <laughs> All these kind of basic things, like get a course on 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 on, uh, on law or whatever else, because it's now your life, yeah. your livelihood, right? A lot of these kids, they think, oh, I'll just do a few shows and whatever else. And it's just like, you're going to be in the gutter in five years yeah. when the next bunch of kids come through with skills, yeah. right? So you have to start, we have to start training these kids to think long term, yeah. you know? The next stage for, let's say someone like Brooke, who's now hitting his 30s, is to be a a choreographer or to manage a group mm. so that it still funnels back to him to start teaching, open a school, yeah. do you know, so that there's a hierarchy and even the youngest can see, okay, I, I do competitions and then I do this yeah. and then I do that and then I end up where Brooke is or I do this da -da -da -da, and then I end up where Ivan is and, da -da -da, and then I do, end up where Kenrick is. So you've got these threads and you can be like, okay, this is what I'm good at and that's where I want to be. Do you think with those kind of structures, it will kind of go into um, a similar structure such as, or it will die out such as contemporary dance or ballet and it will be so structured that Never. this is how you do a six step Never. and this is how it's done. Mm. Because it's, it's not in its nature yeah. to be held down. Even with structure, there's still going to be people that, that break the mould mm. because it's part of what we do, do you know? Yeah. So we, we don't have that fear right now, maybe in 20 years, maybe in 50 years. But then maybe that's inevitable for everything. Because structure brings, uh, it brings something to, to any art form, do you know? Totally. Whether it's music or, or fashion or 
dance or whatever else. It starts off wild, yeah. right? And then it's it, uh, 10, 15 years later, this word pops up, foundation. It's in everything, right? Yeah. So this word now becomes, you can copy, mm. right? From before, you weren't allowed to copy yeah. in any style, right? Then all of a sudden you can copy, but this thing we call foundation. Mm. And 10 years from that, the stuff that was in, a, in a innovation at this point is now foundation as yeah. well. Right, so all of that backstory is now foundation. Mm. Happens in languages, it happens everywhere. Mm. Right, we, we even talk about it like, oh, this word's been added to the Oxford Dictionary. You know, because it's, it's become lingua franca, like, it's normal. Yeah. So the same thing in dance, movements become foundation. This is now foundation. You got foundation power. That doesn't even make sense to me. You know, foundation tricks, like, what? These things yeah. were people's signatures once upon a time. Yeah. Now they're foundation, mm. right? But that's how the body grows. That's how it stays alive. When yeah. a language doesn't grow, we call it a dead language, yeah. right? That's what we have with Latin and Greek and all this. They're dead languages because yeah. they stop growing, right? You need input. It's not a closed yeah, system, yeah. right? Yeah, good, yeah. But in physics, we have like closed systems and open systems, right? Yeah. And dance is an open system. We take influence from everything around us and we build into this body. And what, what makes the grade we keep and what doesn't gets discarded. And this is how it always goes. And it, it does this and it gets resisted. You come with something new and you're supposed to get hate mm. every time. Yeah. Right? But you fight through that hate. You, you forge yourself in the fire of hate. And then your stuff becomes part of the body. And that's how it works. And I've seen it loads of times. And I've seen it in, not just in, in, um, in dance, I've seen it in martial arts. What's useful you keep, and what's crap you just chuck away. And stuff that's crap, at this point, sometimes has utility later. Yeah. And gets reincorporated because someone comes at the right time. Yeah. Sometimes you're ahead of your time, yeah. right? Or it's not quite refined yet. Mm. And then someone in the next generation saw what you did and they refine it and then it becomes part of the body, right? Then the bitterness starts. Oh, I was the guy that first did it, blah, 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 blah. But we have to don't worry about that stuff. We just have to keep the body growing. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we do. What, is, what do you think is next for the UK dance scene? Where, where do you see it going? We're starting to get some action, right? So we're starting to get some dope b-boys. We're starting to get some dope poppers. We're starting to get these, these kids doing hip hop now. So all these Evians and all these kids are just climbing that wall, right? <laughs> yeah, because he's, he's starting to pop off and, and Ice and, and Sharifa and all these kids, they're, they're going to be high level, right? And that's the future. It's the legacy, Yeah. right? The, the generation before that, they're the ones that have prepared the way, mm. right? But these kids are the ones that's going to take it forward. And that's where our concentration should be. Yeah. What's next in this culture? Do you know what I mean? The past is just, it's just for information, man. Yeah, we can romanticize and be all nostalgic Yeah, everybody's about got, it. A, yeah. you know, like how great it was back in the day and all this. It was not that great, bro. And I was there and I lived it, you know, and I had some great times as well. You know, I got, I got sponsored by some gene company. I got free trainers. I got to travel. I did shows on television in Yorkshire. It's like, so what, man? You know, even with the DJ thing, like, I've DJed every big event in the whole world. So what? Who cares, man? Like, it's for the next generation. Who's here to take my place? Do you know what I mean? Even that's a bit of a, a I get pissed off about that. Like you got these young DJs coming up and it's just like, you haven't even had a sit down and chat to me yeah. and be like, okay, you got this far. How do I get that far and go next, go, go further with it? Do you know what I mean? So they're making the same mistakes I made 30 years ago. Yeah. It's not necessary. But is it a thing where if you see a child doing something wrong, is it up to... There's no wrong. Mm. There's no wrong. There's no right or wrong. Yeah. There's good and mm. there's poo. Mm. That's it, right? Like, I don't believe in the, um, 
reinvent the wheel process. I think it's long, do you know? And the way that we've actually got good people in the UK now is because they've been mentored, yeah. right? Not that you can't make it without mentorship, yeah. don't get me wrong. But mentoring facilitates quicker growth and uh, more understanding of what you're doing, right? So instead of people making the same dumb mistakes, you can get them through those mistakes quicker, yeah. right? You don't make them avoid the mistakes because that's not healthy. Mm -hmm. So you get them to the mistakes and get them over that, that, uh, that hurdle quicker, right? And that's really what it's about. Like, just make the process quicker or else we're just doing the same cycle and we're not moving forward, yeah. man. We're just running on the spot.